false premise. In a false premise fallacy, the conclusion of an argument is invalidated by an incorrect assumption in one of the premises. You can't build a house on a poor foundation. Foundational biases and ad hoc reasoning usually have a false premise at their base. Many false premises exist in creationist arguments, like a global flood occurred, evolution is incorrect, etc. But the most formalized example is the Kalam cosmological argument. The false premise is that the universe began to exist. We have no proof that the universe ever not existed. It is called the Kalam cosmological argument. The Kalam argument is deceptively simple in its formulation. It consists of basically three steps. Premise one is that whatever begins to exist has a cause. Something cannot come into being uncaused out of absolutely nothing. Premise two is that the universe began to exist. And the remarkable development that has occurred is that for the first time, we now have solid scientific evidence for the truth of that second premise that the universe began to exist. And from those two premises, it follows logically, therefore, the universe has a cause of its existence. Whatever begins to exist has a cause. The universe began to exist. Therefore, the universe has a cause of its existence. Ad hoc reasoning. Ad hoc reasoning, meaning for this purpose, is done to salvage an argument that rests upon a shaky foundation. Ad hoc reasoning attempts to address unstable or invalid portions of a failed argument. It is often used to avoid re-evaluation of an argument's validity. Kent Hovind is the master of ad hoc reasoning. Of course, his ad hoc reasoning needs its own ad hoc reasoning, but that's part of the beauty. Listen to him try to explain the firmament. Now, this is what is known as the canopy theory. I cannot prove this. I can just tell you what the Bible says. There was water above the atmosphere, and I'm going to believe the Bible until it's proven wrong. Okay? And I can't tell you what it was or how it was held up there. Some people think it was ice, and it was held up by the magnetic field of the Earth. Suspended, what's called the Meissner effect. You know, a magnet will float on top of another magnet. I don't know. Somehow there was water up there. Slippery slope. A slippery slope argument states that accepting a certain argument will lead to a chain of events that culminate in an undesirable outcome. The validity of an argument is not addressed, only the imagined outcome. Here's Venom Fang X sliding us down his slippery slope of stupidity. They'd rather believe that they came from monkeys and can act like animals. And that's why you have kids shooting up their schools, and you have kids doing drugs, and the whole society is falling apart because everyone believes that they came from monkeys, which came from earthworms, which came from slime. Correlation implies causation. This fallacy states that because two events are correlated, there exists a cause and effect relationship. The two variables may be caused by a third variable, or may be completely unrelated. An example of this fallacy is, atmospheric carbon dioxide and crime levels have both risen since 1950. Therefore, Carbon dioxide causes crime. The following is also an example of an argument from verbosity, where many weak examples are given in quick succession to avoid closer scrutiny. That's Kent Hoven, more fallacies per minute, guaranteed. Then in 1963, prayer was taken out of our school system. Anybody remember that with Madeline Murray O'Hare? 1963 is when we saw a great rise in sexually transmitted diseases for kids 10 to 14 years of age. 1963 is when we began to see a rise in premarital sex for every age group. 1963 is when we saw a great rise in unwed birth rates for girls 10 to 14. Now the birth rates are up 100%. Pregnancies are up over 500. The difference is being aborted. Right now, one third of all the kids born in the hospitals are to a couple that's not married. Creative math. Probability arguments employed by creationists often employ creative math, where they make it seem as if the odds of something occurring without creation are incredibly remote. This is essentially an elaborate straw man argument. The creative math argument sets up a straw man that assumes evolution somehow works through random chance. The process of natural selection is the opposite of random. But it's real funny to watch them struggle with their big numbers.
The simplest living cells require thousands of specialized proteins in order to function. A number of scientists have tried to calculate the probability of life arising by chance. Sir Fred Hoyle, a British mathematician, using a supercomputer and the assistance of graduate students, estimated only the origin of the proteins of an amoeba, 2,000 of them, arising by chance. He estimated that the probability that the proteins of an amoeba could arise by chance is one chance in 10 to the 40,000th power. A probability of one chance in 10 to the 40,000th power is absurdly small. Moving the goalposts. When the rules to obtain satisfactory completion of a goal are changed just as they are about to be attained, it is referred to as moving the goalposts. The trick is you can never meet the goal when the goalposts are continuously moved. Kent Hovind's quarter million dollar challenge is an example of this. You will never win the money because he will change the rules at the last moment to make sure you do not. It's shameful. Give Ellie G the quarter million. We offer a quarter million dollars for anybody with any real empirical, testable, scientific evidence for right. evolution. The people engaged in this kind of nonsense always set up the rules that you could never win the money. Has you ever eaten a banana? Oh, yeah, I eat all kinds of food, yeah. <laughs> I eat a banana, that's, <laughs> proof, that's proof we came from rock. That's not proof of evolution. Yeah. Just plain nonsense. Sometimes the failure in logic defies easy explanation. Examples in this category usually require a massive disconnect from reality, and the result is just plain nonsense. And who else could so eloquently exemplify this category? Dinosaurs were just big lizards that lived with Adam and Eve before the flood came. You know, there really was a fire-breathing dragon. He's saying, now, Brother Hovind, you don't believe in fire-breathing dragons, do you? Well, yeah, I do. Outright lie. Not so much a logical fallacy. The outright lie is simply deception in its purest form. Truth is discarded as superfluous in this type of creationist argument. Many, many choices existed, so we went to the biggest and boldest creationist lie of all time. That biology is now entering what can only be described as a revolution. Because the evidence is so overwhelmingly against the conventional neo-Darwinian view. Hopefully, now that you're aware of the logical flaws in these arguments, they will not work any longer, and creationists will cease using them. But in the meantime, look for these types of arguments in creationist publications, in popular media, and in your daily life. Consider this your vaccination against idiocy.